everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Shark Select. But this is not the Shark and Select that you know that your mother told you about. This is another darker Shark Select. A Shark Select so dark that it's like nighttime or something. This is Shark Select Follow Through. You could say it's Shark Select with night mode on. Yes, with mm-hmm. night mode on. I like that. As usual, it stars me, Winstolf, and those lovely Edgerton brothers, it's Stu and Ryan. Hi, guys. Hello. 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 And this. This is like a spin-off series we want to do, because we like talking, and sometimes we want to talk more than for just one podcast a month. So today, we're going to make this first episode of Shark Selects Follow Through about a movie which we all love very much. It's Pinocchio. No, it's not. It is 1987's sci-fi spectacular Robocop. What's our initial thoughts? Just a quick summary of what we think of Robocop, Ryan? It's class, isn't it? Cheesy. Gory. And it's got the best villain in uh, classic 80s films. Mm. Stu, any thoughts on that? No, yeah, pretty much sums it up, and it's just perfection. If you were to show an 80s action movie to someone, then that's the one to show. <laughs> yeah, I would certainly put it at the sharp end of the grid, along with films like Predator. Yeah, so you've got Predator, Terminator, Robocop. It's like the Holy Trinity, the Holy Trinity of sci fi action movies. Yeah. So yeah, it's a 1987 ultra-violent sci-fi movie directed by famous Dutch director Paul Verhoeven. Uh, Do you know know any other films that Paul Verhoeven did? Total Recall. He did. And he also did Starship Troopers, much to no one's surprise. Uh, Total Recall, that's a class film as well. Could be a future Shark Select follow-through episode, would you say? But yeah, Robocop, it stars Paul Weller as eponymous Robocop, a.k.a. Murphy. It's also got Kurtwood Smith, there's Clarence Bodiker, more on him later. It's got Nancy Allen as Lewis, who's Murphy's partner when he's a normal, when he's a meat cop, not a robocop. <laughs> meat cop. We've got Ronnie Cox as Dick Jones. Dick Jones! Who is uh, the big bad. He's good fun. Miguel Ferrer as Bob Morton, not to be confused with Bob Mortimer, who's a British comedian, <laughs> and he's not in this film. We've got Ray Wise as Leon. Now, I was just going to say, I always like to think when, that, when it does a line... Bob Mortimer made a mistake. Now it's time to erase <laughs> that mistake. And then shoots the Yeah, he shoots the That's a British comedy joke, everyone. Feel free to Google that one. Uh, yeah, Ray Wise plays the character of Leon. I didn't even notice this for all the times I've watched Robocop. It's the president from Command and Conquer Red Alert 2. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> AKA that guy from Supernatural, AKA that guy from Agent Carter, who That's always bad. plays like smarmy politicians. That proper blew my mind. I was just like, wow. Uh, we've got Felton Perry as Johnson, a.k.a. the cool black guy that has the weird laugh like a hyena. Oh, the guy who gets got, his deck out. Yeah, the guy that gets his chopper out to distract somebody. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, or, or was he having a wee? Mind if I sip this up? <laughs> yeah, but he waited until until she looked down, didn't she, to look at his knob, and then went, she, he attacked him. That's right. It's the, the, the biggest weapon in the film after that big sniper rifle. Yeah, but he doesn't go and check if she if he's knocked her out or anything. Just, she falls off some railings and then he just walks off laughing. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking slapdash baddies. Yeah. We've got Paul McCrane as Emil, who is an who is a fun character in this film. Yeah, he's my he second really, favourite. He has a really nasty death that we're looking forward to discussing later. And we've got Lee De Bronx, who plays Sal, aka the man with the glass of wine that you can't drink anymore. Yeah, he's still drinking. <laughs> Still drinks it. Oh, fair enough. Then. He doesn't mind about where Clarence's fingers have been, does he? Right. Okay. So that's the brief summary of the, the uh, film and cast. So the film opens with uh, Detective Murphy. This is he, he's a, a new cop in Detroit, of course. First day on the job. First day on the job in Detroit, a city that's gone to hell, and is now the police are failing madly. So the city is now owned, privately owned, isn't it? You know, it doesn't it? It opens up with um, in that laser guy. That's right, it does open with the kind of... Um, oh, yeah, doing this. Adverts, isn't it? Yeah, th- that's right, there's a man on TV. He's like a, like a laser cop, like she says, like a cheesy yeah. sci-fi detective. And he spins his pistol like a gunslinger. And Murphy's practising it, isn't he? Well, if we just rewind back a bit, I think it actually starts in the OCP headquarters, doesn't it? Does it? Have all, the, all the prostitutes and that, and they're all like... I might be wrong, but OCP... Uh, this is how how thoroughly we researched for follow through. We've not actually watched the film recently, but uh, oh well, it's free, isn't it? But yeah, um, I'm sure it starts with OCP when they're given a demonstration of a new weapon. 
No, it doesn't. There's no way. It starts with the um, the fake t- the fake news, then it does the fake adverts, and then I think it goes to the Ed Two Hundred Nine oh, okay. reveal. Does a man say, "I'll buy that for a dollar" in that sequence? It says that on every sequence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. It does open with that. We are correct, and then it goes to OCP headquarters, right? Yeah. OCP standing for Omnicorp, who are the private corporation that owns the city of Detroit. But yeah, so it goes to OCP headquarters where Dick Jones, nasty executive type fella, is given a new demonstration of a weapon that he's developed called Ed 209, which is a big stop motion robot, which I'm sure you'll both agree is awesome. Yeah, and it growls, doesn't it? It does. And at one point in the movie, it screams. Yeah, it does. Very disturbing. Yeah, he's a big stop motion bipedal robot with guns for arms. And they demonstrate what happens if uh, a willing volunteer picks up a handgun and then Ed 209 will tell him to drop the weapon, and he will, and it'll be a good demonstration. Except when the guy drops the weapon, Ed 209 doesn't pick up on this and yeah, continues he, to count down. He continues to count down, doesn't it? You've got 10 seconds to comply. And then when the time's yeah. up, he blows it to pieces. Yeah, but then he goes, <laughs> five seconds to comply. For some reason, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he. he he just like there are a few weird sound effects in Robocop, which we'll go into more later. Don't really understand why they happen. Yeah. But, we'll go into this later. but yeah, anyway, he runs out of time and Ed 209 blows him to bits and he falls onto a model of the city, which is some kind of um, symbolism. Or he falls out the window, depends on what version you watch. That's true, yeah. We should mention at this point there's so many different cuts and edits of this movie out there for various audiences. But we're going to go for the 18 slash R rated version, <coughs> which has got all the blood and nastiness. So uh, the poor executive gets blown to bits by a 209. Now, what happens next to you? Because you, you've got a better memory for this than me. I know what happens, but I can't remember the, the order it happens in. Right. I think it cuts to uh, Lewis slamming a guy against the desk. That's right. The police. Station. Murphy walks in, and then he gets a little bit of a tour, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. And there's a sergeant. There's a cool, a cool black police sergeant. Isn't Clarence Bunker in that part as well? No, that's oh, later. That later on. That's no, later. that's later on. That's when yeah. um, he throws him at the desk and goes, fuck him. <laughs> uh, Just get me my fucking phone call. That's it. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, Murphy's introduced to Lewis with it being his first day on the job. And uh, they, they they both go out on patrol then, don't they? Well, can I just say on the patrol part, I think the cop cars look really cool in it because they're just like Matt Black, aren't they? Yeah, Matt, badass. Matt Black battered cop cars. They are pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, I'm all right thinking that next we're introduced to the baddies, though. Yeah, I think it cuts to you burn the fucking money. That's right. There's just been a bank job, and the baddies are escaping in the van across the city. Their leader is Clarence Bodica, who looks like someone's friendly uncle, but he's actually a psychopath. And uh, the rest of his team are there with him. He's got Leon, Emil, uh, and a couple of the others. But he's also got Bobby, who's uh, about to leave the gang in an interesting fashion. When Murphy and Lewis... We've missed a scene. It there goes... we go, you see... Stewie's the sage of Robocop. Mm. Go up. Before that, it's when they're getting coffee at a coffee shop or something, and he's doing the whole laser cop spinning of the gun thing. That's right. Yeah, because the laser cop spinning of the gun thing is important. Yeah, and he's like putting it in and out of his holster and stuff, and then Lewis like comments on it or something, and that's when they get the phone call about the bank job. That's right, and the, the van's being marked by the police, and the Lewis and Murphy go into hot, hot pursuit. At the van. And whilst the police car's pulling up behind them, Clarence Bonica throws open the doors and gets his henchmen to shoot at the police. Apart from, uh, I believe it's Murphy shoots Bobby in the leg. Yeah, that'd be true, yeah. And Clarence Bonica, in a ruthlessly efficient kind of way, realises that his, his, his injured henchman is not being much good anymore. So he picks it, gets it by the collar and says, Can you fly, Bobby? Which is needlessly sadistic, really, because he, he was his mate a few minutes ago. Mm. Then just throws him out of the back of the van. He knows he can't fly. Exactly, he knows he can't fly. It's not something humans can do. But he throws him out of the back of that van and he lands ass first onto the police car. Yeah, he does, yeah. And that's the end of Bobby. What does he say in that scene where he's kicking a meal and he's driving? Slow down! Slow the fuck down! Or something, isn't it? Yeah, something yeah, he does like that, like a, yeah. He does like a weird little kick that's <laughs> n- never going to hurt anyone. It's just like a little inept Yosemite Sam style kick. <laughs> But he doesn't say what intonation or anything. He just says, you burn the fucking money! Which means that the bank job probably didn't go very well. So yeah, anyway, Bobby Lance asked first on the police car, but the pursuit continues for a bit longer, doesn't it? To an abandoned warehouse. Yes. 
the all-important abandoned warehouse. Is that the same one at the end of this film as well? I believe it is, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, where RoboCop goes to eat his... Uh, Spoiler alert! God, don't ruin the end, Stu, for people <laughs> who haven't seen this film from 31 years ago, or however long it may be. But yeah, anyway. So they go to the warehouse. Uh, they, I think they arrive there a good few minutes after Clarence and co have got there, don't they? Yeah. They probably have to scrape Bobby off the windscreen or something. Mm. And instead of calling for backup like any respectable police, they decide that two cops are going to be enough to take down a clearly psychotic armed gang. So uh, they go in there, they sneak about, they, they do some stealth, and Lewis comes across, I forget the black gangster's name now, it's terrible, isn't it? Let's go Johnson. back in. It was... Johnson. Johnson, After yeah. After his enormous pet. Yeah, ironically <laughs> enough. Because Johnson's having a wee with his enormous Johnson out. Yeah. And Lewis, whether or well, like we just discussed... There's some, some altercation with Johnson's chopper and she ends up getting knocked out by being thrown over a railer. Not that Johnson bothers checking that. He's just fin- he's probably just finished having the wee. He's feeling relieved. And he goes to find the others. I think he finds Clarence and he makes some funny comment about her being distracted by his nod, oh, doesn't no, no. he? No, no, it's not that. But yeah, it goes to whether on a meal and the other like uncle-looking fella are on the couch <laughs> watching um, I'll buy that for a dollar, man. I'll buy that for a dollar! Uh, yeah, and then Murphy holds them both up. That's right. Yeah, Murphy decides he can hold up two terrible gangsters by himself with a little handgun. Yeah, and then Clarence comes in. You didn't come here on your own. You'd be some kind of super cop or something. That's right, yeah. He calls him a super cop. That's right. And then I think they drag Lewis out, don't they? No, I don't think they drag her out. I think that's when uh, Johnson comes down and says, um, I took care of her or something. And she was sweet. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Anyway, something happens, so the baddies turn the tables on Murphy then, doesn't it? Yeah, it gets outnumbered, doesn't it? And they've got guns pointed out and it's time yeah. to drop it. There's that bit I always remember, because it's brutal, where he gets the shotgun like a club and whacks him in the back of the knees to make him fall to his knees. And that, was, that was brutal, that was. And then he's on his knees on the floor and they've all got the guns to him. And uh, Clarence says another classic Clarence banger. Clarence banger one-liners. This movie is full of them. What's he say, Stu? Cops don't like me. So I don't like cops. That's right. And he has the shotgun, and he uh, he blow, very graphically blows his hand off, and all bits of gristle go everywhere, and it's proper grim, like any good Paul Verhoeven gore scene. Yeah. And then, does he shoot him a second time? No, he just shoots his hand off, doesn't he? Then, then he gets his men to finish him off. No, then Not he goes, come on, give that guy a hand. Give the man a hand. And then he walks off whilst all the others just lay into him with handguns. That's right, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then it cuts to another scene, doesn't it? Where he's being, uh, where it's like an ambulance. Yeah, but that scene lasts for a very long time when he's getting shot. It does. I mean, it's almost fetish. It's almost like, I feel like a fetish thing, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's going on for ages. And then, like, he's just, going, he's just screaming and he's, like, rolling back in two while he's being shot and there's blood going everywhere. Yeah, it's like, it's it's a bit crazy. Unless you're watching the Universal version, then it's, um, then then it, it just cuts to a unicorn. Uh, so I think Clarence walks over and shoots him in the head, doesn't he? Yeah, that's right. Clarence finishes him. But he doesn't do a very good job because an ambulance is keeping him just about alive in the next scene. Which makes you wonder, did they just wander off out the HQ after that and leave the bodies there? Yeah, they must have, yeah. Well, they must have dragged him out and just left him on the street and then called an ambulance. <laughs> I'll call an ambulance. <laughs> Either way, Lewis survives and Murphy is in nasty condition, full of bullet holes with no hand. And they're dragged off into the ha- in the ambulance. So, what happens next, Stu? I swear it's the whole turn into Robocop sequence, isn't it, from first person? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it goes to Murphy's first person view then, as he's uh, rebuilt as the, the titular Robocop. Mm. There's, a, there's a bit where someone drills a wireframe to his eyes. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that well, bit. in and it goes past the wireframe anyway. That's right, and then the wireframe was never there. Yeah. It's like playing. It's like playing a Deus Ex game. It's also that classic bit where I said, "Oh, we managed to save his left arm," and they're like, "No, I went Robocop lose it, so they have to cut off his left arm to put a robot one on." Yeah, I mean, he was really adamant about not having his real arm, but at the same time, he was more than happy to stretch his disembodied face over it, wasn't it? Yeah. But why did they make a thing of keeping his arm in the remake? Well, I've not watched the remake because it's garbage. I refuse to believe it exists. <laughs> He's the, I didn't remake, the remake him, and he has like. Oh you yes, see, I remember. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, mm. you see Robocop dangling there, and then he's like, like just his organic parts. It's a head, uh, then a couple of organs, and then a hand. So when he's like full Robocop mode, it's just got one human hand. I mean, what's that for? 
Yeah, and, yeah, and you the, know what it's for. The, oh, yeah. It's for touching people. In, in the remake, it's got it's like a full full robo suit, except one left hand. Yeah, it's like, just, this is weird. This is what you get, get the hand. <laughs> it's to finger his robo bum or to unlock his phone with a fingerprint. Yeah, oh, that's true. Fun. Yeah. Because how annoying would it be if you had like a new phone you went to unlock? It's like, damn it, my robot finger could not unlock it. I find it really annoying. Know about you? So yeah, so he's he's being rebuilt as the RoboCop. Yeah, what's Bob Mortimer say to him? <laughs> Bob Mortimer. <laughs> Bob Mortimer. He says, "Fucking love this guy." I think. Is that what he says? You're gonna be a bad motherfucker. That's right. Yeah, he's gonna be a bad motherfucker. Yeah, and that, now does it cut to a boardroom scene after this? There's a boardroom scene around this point somewhere, which is really weird. And it just the dream sequence, and he wakes up and starts doing super cops justice. I'm sure there was a scene where Bob Morton's getting grilled by Dick Jones because oh, Dick Jones. No, no. Doesn't it cut to um, the bit where he's taking a piss and uh, Dick Jones works right, yeah. in? Yeah, because he's having the Wii and there's a, another executive that works at OCP. A yeah, black guy. And he looks like he's really getting off on insulting Dick Jones. Yeah. And he's, like, to the point where it's, it's unhealthy. And Dick Jones is taking a shit and over here and everything, isn't he? That's right, because they're stood next to each other. A bank of urinals where there's loads of empty ones. No, no. Completely uh, Bob the goes rules. for piss. And he's like mouthing off about Dick Jones, but everyone knows Dick Jones is in there taking a shit for some reason. And everyone leaves, That's... and then Dick Jones comes out and washes his hands <laughs> next to him. Did Dick Jones broadcast that he's going for a shit? I'm going for a shit. <laughs> he must have a distinct sound like, or something. Yeah. <laughs> so evil. Just doing the poo. Yeah, then he comes out. Doesn't he like proper grab him by the collar and have a go at him? Grabs him by the hair, doesn't he? Like a little bitch. That's right. Yeah, he, he's quite upset, isn't he? Yeah. I think it doesn't help that he he, he wanted the funding for Ed 209 as well, didn't he? Yeah, that's what it was. But it's been stolen for Robocop. So now we cut, so now we cut more to the action, don't we? I think it goes to the scene where he's walking around the police station, he's doing a, like, shooting the, his gun at the firing range. That's right, he's at the firing range. Gun. And Lewis is there as well, and they're all firing. Yeah, he is. Some cops say the fucking gun because he's got this massive handgun. Yeah, and then doesn't she? What doesn't she see him gunslinger the gun before he puts it in his holster? Yeah, doing the laser cop thing. Is it? Yeah, but the holster is actually his leg. It's his yeah, leg, his it? leg opens up. And he's got a compartment in his thigh where he can put a gun, which is very cute. I mean, it's, it's, good, it's good for space saving. But yeah, I think she sees the gunslinger and makes a bit of a connection, doesn't she? Yeah, and is this bit where she goes? Where she says, "Murphy, it's you," or is that? After, that's later, I think. Yeah. That's after that, yeah. That's after yeah. some classic cop antics, I think, isn't it? Oh, yeah, that's a bit when they're leaving the police station and Bob's like, uh, get this guy a car. And the sergeant throws some car keys. He just grabs some midair and goes, thank you. That's right. Thank you. And then, how does he fit in the car? He's like a big old clumsy walking tank man. What yeah, makes how me does laugh? he just like bottom out the car? Yeah, definitely. Would. Is, uh, when, he, when he walks, he doesn't turn his like neck no. or walk like diagonals of like a normal human would he only walks in 90 degree turns and if you watch so he'll walk and he'll be like turn stop turn like a Roomba walk, to stop, to, yeah basically Roomba yeah. cop yeah but he turns his head first doesn't he oh yeah <laughs> like he's kind of looking well, like his indicators yeah he, wa- gonna- he walks like um, a first person shooter main character he does but from the 90s yeah that's how <laughs> he walks like he's in Wolfenstein 3D <laughs> But yeah, anyway, he does some cop antics next. So he got so there's a guy holding up a gun store. Not a gun store, it's like a convenience store, isn't it? Mm, yeah. And uh, he goes in and he says, what's he say? Dead or alive, you're coming with me. Is that what he says? Come quietly or there will be trouble. That's the one. No, like, no, no, that's, big... no that's, the, that's the warehouse scene. That's no, warehouse. I got so mixed up. Anyway, the buddy tries to shoot him, but he bends the barrel of the gun 90 degrees. Like a cartoon, and that throws him into a fridge. I think. Yeah, I think so. Like a what? Like a fridge cabinet. Yeah, just, does he just leave him? Yeah, he just walks off, like, doesn't he? Robocop, you're supposed to arrest them. <laughs> but I suppose it was his first trip. That's why they had to reprogram him when he came back. Like fuck's sake, you forgot to put in the arrest mode. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's just rough housing mode. He goes to that um, where that woman's being hassled by two two blokes. And- That's right. There's a woman being. Uh, Assaulted by a couple of extremely late eighties looking men. Not as in age, as in the period of time. Yeah, as in <laughs> 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 too pensioners. 
I've not had me and me ever cream. Anyway, yeah. So they so so they try to hold up a woman, and Robocop shoots one, and then shoots the other one when he tries to take a hostage between the, like through the woman's skirt and shoots no, him in the dick. No, he shoots the guy from in the dick and then he goes, Your move, creep. Yeah, that's right, yeah. So like you just shot him in the and dick. And then he walks off again. Yeah, just leaves a, a dick shot man on the ground. It leaves the woman to find her way home in the middle of what's clearly a rough neighborhood. It could just happen again, Robocop. No, he tells that he's going to sort out some sort of therapy or something, he says. Oh, he assigns some therapy, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> like that, just magic therapy. Yeah. yeah but he still leaves her there and then just walks off. I'm pretty sure he does, yeah. Would you? Can you concur this, Jay? I think he does. I think he, you don't really he see what happens. You don't, you, don't, you don't see if he takes her to the crisis centre or whatever. It just cuts away from that scene. Yeah. Let's just only, do, I can only presume yeah. that he just walks away. <laughs> Let's just assume that he just went back to the police station. <laughs> <laughs> no, when he gets to the police station, they have to put him on charge, don't they? Yeah. So they take him to his magic on charge chair and get, feed the him... wireless some, charging chair. Yeah. yeah, feed him some baby food. Although, what if it's not wireless? What if there's a C-type charger or something up his bum? And he has, to, he has to sit on it like a cradle, like an <laughs> iPod deck. <laughs> It's not big, it'd be like a tiny charger. It might be a pretty big one. Well, no, yeah. you hope for Robocop thing. It's a small one. Maybe he just has to actually dock it. <laughs> oh, blimey. <laughs> that sounds painful. <laughs> like a literal docking space. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so does it... Am I right in thinking, on the, way to, on the way to the baby food charging station, he runs into yeah. Lewis, and that's yeah. when Lewis says what she says. Yeah, because that's what causes him to have that dream, isn't it? No, I don't think it is. No, it is. No. It's very actually for the timeline, because he also runs into one of Clarence's gang later, doesn't he? That's later on, yeah. Yeah. That's later on. But, he, but is that what breaks his programming? Or, yeah, because Lewis just starts the dreams, doesn't he? He goes back to his house, doesn't he, as well, at some point. What happens is, bumps into Lewis, then he goes to get charged, then he has a dream, and then... And in that he dream... He has a fit, doesn't he? Because he sees, he, starts, he sees Clarence shooting him in the head and stuff. He also sees his wife there as well. That's when he goes to his house. No, not yet. That's, right. That's not yet. Oh, um, is that later on? After yeah. After the gas station oh, sign. doesn't matter. Hey, it does matter. It's important. It's Robocop. <laughs> so then he, he has his dream. Uh, yeah. Then he goes on a bit of a rampage thing, finds a meal, and then because he's seen a meal, he goes back to the police station. That's when his hand flips and breaks backwards, and he goes onto some <laughs> computer thing. Yeah, that's spike. Right, yeah. And that's when yeah, he, so just, he just finds just a just going to a bit more detail. He goes back out on patrol where there's a gas station holder, and it's a meal from the start of the film. Clarence's mate, yeah. and he's doing. He's giving the guy in the gas station some speech about geometry. Is he <laughs> doing when he goes? You think you can outsmart a bullet? That's right. He's doing his job. He's doing some geometry homework. Yeah, yeah. It's like you think you're pretty smart. You reckon you could outsmart a bullet? Like, all right, big man. He's only doing his fucking own work. And then Robocop shows up and he's he recognizes him and he just sort of flips out of it, doesn't he? He just stands there, doesn't he? He locks up. Yeah. But Emil flips out. Emil sort of recognizes him and goes, You're dead, we killed you, or something like that. Robocop says the same thing that yeah. he said to Emil at the start. Which must be dead or alive, you're coming with me. Yeah, and then he's like, and then that's when Emil triggers remembering that you've killed him already. See, I forgot about his, the, the, about the line he said. I thought he just recognised his chin. I thought he had really good chin detection <laughs> software. Because the, the only part of Murphy that you can see is his chin at this point, because he's wearing a cool helmet. Yeah, but it's just dead or alive, cool with me, and that's what he said before. And so he's like, well, I remember now. <laughs> but I thought, I thought Emil was like, I know those luscious lips from anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's Detective Murphy. <laughs> so yeah, Emil tries to escape on a bike. Yeah, he does escape, though, doesn't he? Because he blows up the... Petrol yeah, station. the fuel station explodes and Robocop walks jauntily through the explosion. Yeah. yeah. Well, I thought he'll crash the motorbike. Yeah, but he gets no, away, though. No, no, it doesn't. Robocop shoots the bike and then the bike sort of like skids and he crashes into a car. Yeah, so what happens to Emil then? Does he get captured? He mustn't do. Yeah, I think he does because he escapes when they have the, uh, the police strike. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, then. Should we power on, then? Yeah. Am I right in thinking about the next scene? Is that Bob Mortimer's house? I think so, yeah. Makes sense. So this next scene is some top-notch Clarence Bodica and also some top-notch Paul Verhoeven look seeing into the future. Because uh, Bob Mortimer's got some sexy girls around his house. Bob Mort- I've got to say Bob Mortimer. <laughs> Bob Mortimer <laughs> has some sexy girls around his house and we're having a sexy party. Like Stewie and Family Guy. Nah. And then he goes to knock at his door and it's Clarence Bodica, isn't it? 
and he's got a silenced pistol. And what does he say, Stu? Bitches leave. Bitches leave. And all the girls have to... I mean, not only have they been, like, insulted by him, but they don't have to, they have to, they don't have to leave the party. And then he comes in with a silenced pistol, and they get this for some top future predictions. He makes Bob Morton watch a DVD. They weren't around in 1987. 20 years before DVD is even invented. Exactly. Paul Verhoeven, what a guy. And on the DVD, I don't know if they copied this specially, or if it was just like piles of like Dick Jones prepared to die DVDs lying around the office. <laughs> but he puts it in, and there's Dick Jones, and he said something really sassy about uh, cashing him out or something. I think it was a mistake. Now I've got to erase that mistake. On it, isn't it? Mm. Bob Morton made it. Oh, that, that, that's later. He, he says that later to Robocop. He no, says, no, it's not to say later, it's the same recording. No, it's oh, not as different. No, no, no. It well, is about what? cashing out. I'm cashing you out. Yeah, because, because why would he say to Bob Morton, Bob Morton made a mistake? You say, you made a mistake. I wouldn't say, Ryan, Ryan made a mistake oh, yeah, to your yeah, face, yeah, would yeah. I? <laughs> and then, yeah, and then Clarence Bonner could just nade the house and kills her. Yeah, but it's grenade. It's got a little LCD display on it. Just to make sure you know how long it... Yeah, Ryan's right. He does shoot first. And it's crawling through the house. Yeah. Oh, mortally wounded the nade just out of reach. <laughs> That's right. He pulls the pin pin out of his tongue. Of course he does. It's Clarence Bodica. He's, yeah. like, he's the meanest, harmless uncle-looking baddie you'll ever meet. And then he just like walks off as the house explodes. Yeah. DVD and R. And that's the end of Bob Mortimer. Unless he gets rezzed by, by Vic Reeves. Yeah. But that's the end of it. And then he goes to the next scene, which I believe is, like we said earlier, Robocop goes back to go and charge. And that's a complete flake out. That's jerky dreams, doesn't he? Jerky, jerky dreams. After which... I think this is where he stomps through the police station, and then this is where his hand yeah, has right. a spike. He kind of goes rogue, doesn't he? And then he goes, yeah, he goes, he goes to the archives room, where the only way to interact with a computer is to use a large dagger in a special port made for large daggers. Yeah. So he draws a large dagger out of his wrist, like spring, spring-loaded spring dagger, and then his hand spins a weird 360 degrees. Well, it spins the wrong way. It's, if, it's his right hand that he plugs in, so you'd, you'd spin it. Anti-clockwise, yeah, because that makes sense. But if you watch the film, it's actually like an extra foot away than where it should be, and it spins clockwise, so like the wrong way into it's a, it. It's almost like the guy in charge of the knife hand prop got it wrong. Yeah, yeah, but, but it's it's funny. I noticed it like last time we were watching it. I had to rewind it to watch it again just to make sure I wasn't going mad. Yeah. Anyway, he puts it in, and he accesses the file on a meal and realizes through looking at his file that he is Murphy. Yeah. In fact, he also searches Murphy though, doesn't he? Yeah, does he, yeah, he finds himself. Yeah, and they said it's deceased. Yeah, he finds Emil, then he goes like through everyone out, all the known associates, and he finds Clarence, doesn't he? He goes to Emil's Facebook and goes to his friends list and finds Clarence. Yeah. And then he remembers being shot to death by his gang when he was Murphy. Yeah, and he finds search Murphy and finds that he's, been, that he's dead. Yeah, that's right. I think that's the point where he has the comedy flashback to his house. Yeah, he goes back, doesn't he? Then he drives to his house. He drives to his house, yeah. That's right, yeah. I just remember something from the flashback about his family earlier. His wife constantly saying, I've got something to tell you. I've got something to tell you. Over and over again. Anyone else remember that bit? Yeah, but you never know what it is. Yeah. No, they don't. But there you go. He goes to his house and his family are gone. They're clearly just fucking, oh, well, he's dead. Let's let's move out. We <laughs> fucked off. And then uh, he, he was shite at gunslinging anyway. Fuck him. Yeah. Yeah, but then he has that really funny stomp around the house. He gets That's angry right, yeah. and angry. And just a weird little yeah. walk thing. He has an emotional mince, robo mince around the house. He has like a proper like toddler tantrum around the house, like his head's going everywhere and his arms are swinging about. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> robo toddler, isn't he? Like a three year old out of control on sugar. And then, I, am I right in thinking he then goes after Clarence? Yeah, there were things, yeah. that's when he, I think he goes to the, um, it cuts to the warehouse, doesn't it? And that's when. That's right. Best scenes in the film. We have to get this one right now. This scene's amazing. It's both comedy and full of action, and also has some important plot points in it. So he goes to the warehouse. So it's, we, we cut to the warehouse where Clarence and the gang are trying to get some cocaine off someone. Yeah, off Sal. Isn't it? Off a man called Sal, who is your most token stereotyped Italian gangster you've ever seen in your life. And uh, he's trying to negotiate with him, and he, he says something to insult Sal, doesn't he? Yeah, he says, I don't want to fuck with you, Sal. The Tigers are playing tonight. We never lose a game. That's right. And then, um, is that the point where he, put, he dips his fingers in Sal's wine? Yes. Yeah, that's, that's not how you, that's not how you experience wine, Clarence. Yeah, goes, goes, 
I don't want to fuck with you, Sal. Yeah, you're supposed to yeah. shake it around in the cup and talk about the nice bouquet. Not put your fingers in it, you clown. Anyway, think... they'll pull, pull, they all pull guns on each other. That's and right. Then, and he goes, ooh, guns, guns, guns. Which was... See episode two. Yeah, that. episode two, real life Robocop reference of guns, guns, guns. I think so just, oh, and then he says he's got a, I, I shall redact the racist words because we don't use them on this podcast because we're good people. He says, I'm going to stick this factory so far up your ass, you'll be shitting snow for a week. Which is pretty, it's, it's, which is, I'd like to see him put the factory up his ass. I'm, I'm, it's a shame that they like cut that scene out. <laughs> but as, he's, but as, as, as they're about to kick off, who shows up, Stu? Robocop. <laughs> and he shows up, and that's when he says the line, Come quietly, or there will be trouble. And then some guy goes, ah, fuck this! And then there's a massive gunfight. Yeah, so he does the, uh, the weird shooting, like one arm hanging out the back, and then like shooting yes. people there. Yeah. It's like he's using his other arm to counterbalance his torso whilst he's shooting. Yeah. Which I don't entirely understand, but he kills a... Well, he doesn't kill, he kind of wounds a lot of people, doesn't he? Because I don't yeah. think he's allowed to kill, is he? But he wounds a whole lot of people. And then he corners Clarence and starts throwing him through loads of plate glass windows. I don't know why there. This warehouse is full of loads of, like, a maze of windows. Yeah. And he's throwing them through them, one by one. And Clarence is getting all bloodied and battered. And then Robocop gets his... Gets him by the throat, doesn't he? Yeah. And he kind of makes him t- see who he's working for. No, yeah, but then, then he says, then he says like, um, he's going to... Oh, that's when he's booking him, isn't he? Yeah. He's a cop killer. And that's right. He grabs him by the throat and he asks who he's working for because he makes him admit who he's working for. It's Dick Jones! Dick Jones! Yeah, that's it. And then as Robocop's tightening his grip on him, Clarence says, you, basically, you can't kill me. You're a cop! And then Robocop's directives come into play. Yeah. It's got three directors. I can't remember what three of them are now. It's uphold the law. Serve and protect. Serve and protect. What's the third one? And there's a fourth secret one, but we'll learn about it. I'm, I'm guessing the third one is after justice has been served, just walk away and don't finish the report. Yeah, it must be. Don't worry about the rest of your job, Robocop. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> so, yeah. Basically, he can't kill Clarence. It's his programming. So instead, he takes him down to the station, where, as Stu correctly said, he says, book him. He's yeah, a cop killer. That's where he gets the... No, throws the um, paper down and Clarence spits blood on it and goes, just give me my fucking phone call. So yeah, Clarence is in the slammer at this point then. So what happens next? Remind me, Stu. Doesn't it cut to the whole police going on strike thing? Is this about the point where he goes after Dick Jones? Yeah, it is. This is where he goes after Dick Jones, yeah. And he has a big fight with Ed 209. But is there a scene before that where we show that Clarence has been sprung from jail and he's talking to Dick Jones? No, that's after because remember the, when he... He's got his old face is all cut up and they're repairing his office. No, that's right. Look at my face, dick. <laughs> Look at my dick face. That's the deleted scene from the A-team, which he was in for a bit. <laughs> Where he tried to make the face man look at his chopper. But yeah, so you're right. So now Robocop's on one, you know, he's, and he goes straight to OCPHQ to try and arrest Dick Jones. Except on his way there, well, he, I think he gets there without too much trouble, doesn't he? Yeah, he gets all the way into the office, doesn't he? Because he's got Directive 4. That's right, because he, he moves to arrest Dick Jones, but then he starts flaking out and like sinks to his knees and starts jerking around. <laughs> and it turns and then Dick Jones reveals the secret directive. Directive four that he uh, he, he basically he can't move against Dick Jones or any member of the board. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's it, yeah. The secret directive is, is that he is OCP's toy, basically, and you can't turn on them. And then he said the line which we thought he said earlier, which Ryan thought he said earlier on in the film. Bob Martin made a mistake. Now it's time to erase that mistake. And then Ed 209 comes out of nowhere, and there's this really cool bit with lots of stop motion stomping and missiles. Yeah. And does Ed 209 just punch him through a million more windows? Yeah. But did Detroit just spend all of its budget on windows? Either that or uh, stunt glass was invented. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Paul Verhoeven was like, I want all this stunt glass. And that was just in the film. So yeah, he gets battered, doesn't he? Yeah, he has a big fight with him, doesn't he? Like, grab, put, didn't he pull his arm off at some point? No, Ed 209 just mullers him and knocks and then he, he escapes to the multi story car park, doesn't he? Yeah, but Ed 209 falls down the stairs first. Yes, he does, because Robocop skips down the stairs and Ed 209 can't walk downstairs because he's got big stompy hooves and he just falls down the stairs and he's laying on his back and he has an actual giant robot tantrum. Yeah, and he screams. Yeah, he kicks its legs like a toddler and it screams, which is really unnerving the first time you watch it. Not as unnerving as that bit in Robocop 2 where he pulls his own head off. 
Oh, yeah, all the screaming robots. Yeah, there's no sequels to Robocop. No, you're right. I, it was just a horrible dream that I had. It's not real! But, yeah, Robocop escapes to the multi-story car park where Dick Jones, his security goons, all open fire on him. And there's, like, a, just a, a ridiculous amount of assault rifles firing at him. No, it's the police open firing, not the goons. No, oh, yeah, because the police are owned by OCP at this point, aren't they? Yeah. And he's all flailing around, and then a police car pulls up to rescue him. It's only fucking Lewis, isn't it? He rolls down all the different stories first, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, the... That's right. He finds <laughs> each... <laughs> that, that staggered parking lot in it, so he rolls in between the gaps. Yeah. Like he finds each exit ramp and rolls down it. <laughs> not the exit ramp. Rolls <laughs> <laughs> down the exit ramp. <laughs> so I film it. Yeah, just and then he gets rescued by Lewis and they escape in the police car. So so now is where the plot gets hazy. Is this where the police go on strike? The police are going on strike because of all the police being killed. The the police chiefs having a fit because police can't go on strike. But then they go on strike anyway. Brilliant. Yeah, but I think yeah. they go on strike anyway, and then that's when everyone escapes. Or it's I just they escape, I think I think Clarence and the Meal must just get bailed out by Dick Jones. Yeah. And then there's that then there's the scene in OCP office, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, Where? this is before, yeah. Yeah, that's before. So this, I think it either cuts to Robocop in the factory eating his baby food, or shooting his baby food even, with Lewis. Yes, and he, he takes his helmet, his helmet off. off. And you can see his grim, stretched face over a robot head. Yeah. Which is horrible. Goes... I, hate, I kind of just wish he kept the helmet off. <laughs> yeah. It's horrible. It's like, what? oh no. Why did he keep his face? I don't know. Just give, just give him a full-on robot head. It would have been so much better. But never mind, never mind. We, we can't question perfection, can we? No, I'll tell you the way I think it goes. I'll tell you the order I think it goes in. Go on. He has the office scene, and then it cuts to the scene outside the shops where they've got the big, really big gun. No, he has to go to, um, Clarence has to go to see Dick Jones and get it, tell him about his face. Yeah, that's what I mean. So that, that was the next thing. He gets given that it? little weird GPS thing, which is another thing that hadn't been invented yet. Robocop GPS to go and find your nearest Robocop. Yeah. It's like, okay, Google, show me where Robocop is. Yeah. And they also give him a really big gun to kill Robocop really easily in one shot. And then, so so then does it cut to the bit where they're in the high street? Yeah. So Clarence has been given all the big guns and a big fancy car to go and hunt Robocop. That's where Emil uses the gun. Then he goes, I like it. That's right. Yeah, that's right. He says, I like it. Like that, yeah. Anyway. So that scene happens. And then, I, mean, I think that's when we go to Robocop shooting baby food. Because that goes straight on to the next scene, doesn't it? Because it's about that point where Clarence's gang shows up to hunt him down, isn't it? That's it, yeah. Yeah, so Clarence's gang shows up with the van and uh, the rifles, and they start trying to hunt him down. And what follows is a really cool action sequence. What's it, what does Robocop say when he's like stood on the stairs so everyone can see him, and he shoots Johnson? But he says something first. Now who's got a big willy? But he shoots him and then just walks off and like really slow. Like, what are you doing? Out of his directives. <laughs> but here's a question: At this point, has he has he broken his directives? Then no, he can't he's still have... got. I'm guessing, I guess he's allowed to kill them if they try to kill him. Yeah, reasonable force, I guess. I don't know. Or maybe he's just overridden the, that part of his programming because he had the flashback. Yeah, maybe. So anyway, yeah, he kills Johnson and says a one line that we can't remember, and then Emil has a really horrible death. Yeah, he tries to run Robocop over, doesn't he? But Robocop just like casually <laughs> Robocop walks out of the way. Walks out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and Emil, for some reason, can't compensate for this slow movement speed and runs smack bang into a generic toxic waste vat. Yeah, which is just there, just in the open at the side of a road. Yeah. And then he comes out all like Toxic Crusaders looking with all this skin melting off. What and he looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's horrible. Isn't it? Yeah, he tries to grab. He tries to grab. Yes, Leon. And um, Leon like screams and pushes him away. And that doesn't Clarence Bonica run into him by accident in the car. Yeah, so at the same time, um, Lewis is chasing Clarence around in a car chase, and um, that's right. He hits a meal, and meal just like bursts into like green liquid or something. And he just pops. Enough, yeah. He pops over the windscreen, and Clarence crashes the car, doesn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. And then, then there's. A, Robo, there's no sequence of events at this point where Clarence ends up in some knee deep water and he shoots Lewis. Yeah, Lewis gets out of the car for some reason to go and to finish him off or something, and then he just pops up from nowhere and shoots Lewis. Yeah, and then Robo got or something. 
yeah, shoots her in the boob. And then Robocop goes to uh, try and saw it out. And then Leon's in the crane and drops a whole load of pipes on top of him, which pins him. And this is the this is a good bit now. Clarence beats him up with, <laughs> with a metal rod, doesn't he? Yeah, and you say Sayonara, Robocop, like that. <sighs> and then as he says that, Robocop gets his USB dagger out and tries to interface it with Clarence Bonica's throat. It's right in the neck, isn't it? Yeah, he gets it right in the windpipe. And as he pulls it out, Clarence Bonica's neck makes a <laughs> noise. As if, like, this is a weird noise, isn't it? it was all the e- I think it was all the evil escaping Clarence Bonica's neck. Yeah, and then all the blood splurts all over Robocop, doesn't it? Yeah, and Clarence is grabbing his neck and going, ah, 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 right there, and then he falls in the water and dies. And Leon gets blown up by the big rifle, which Lewis picks up in the background, and just blows the top of the crane up. I remember that bit. Yeah, and that's yeah. the end of Clarence's gang, which leads us on to the final, where he goes back to OCP again, but this time on with the big rifle. Yeah, but he's still not got his head plate on. He's still just got the face. No, he's still got his there. creepy face. Yeah. Just, just you know, the I, face, in it now? I do wish he put his helmet back on. Yeah. But yeah, Ed 209 meets him outside. He's like, <laughs> generic Ed 209. So. He doesn't even get a chance, does he? Oh, just, yeah, Robocop just... just... Goes, you are parked in an illegal area. <laughs> That's right. And just... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> blows Ed 209 in half. Yeah, yeah. then he's just some lo- legs with his, like a steaming stump. Yeah, and it staggers around and then falls over. Yeah. yeah. Which is really anticlimactic, really. I was expecting a good finale against Ed 209. Yeah, but there was, there was the fight, wasn't there? In the, yeah, but in the Robocop got owned. That's not a fight where Robocop's battering it. He did with a gun. That's not he's battering it. He's just one shot kills it like Indiana Jones. Yeah. And then um, that's it. They go. He just walks straight up to the CEO yeah. office. Yeah, where's the police this time? He just yeah. walks up to the CEO's office, just goes on a little, a little wonder. Well, if I'm right, he plays a video showing everything that's happened. He plays a DVD of uh, Bob Morton. I made a mistake. That's right. He plays a DVD of J- Dick Jones gloating over him earlier in the film. Yeah. Telling him the whole evil plan. So Dick Jones flakes out, pulls a gun, and takes the CEO hostage so that Robocop can't shoot him, even though he's on the board of directors anyway, so I don't know what he's worrying about. But then the CEO says, Dick, you're fired! Like that. Then he says, <sighs> thank you, and shoots Dick Jones in the face. No, not his face. He shoots him like in the arm or something, doesn't he? Yeah, and he falls out the window, he, doesn't he? Yeah, he falls backwards out the window. Then there's weird 80s special effects of Dick Jones falling down from the building. But he's got really long arms and legs, like he's the Slender Man. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the crossover. He's Slender Man, Dick Jones, his ghost. Could, Could be, be yeah. Ah, you go, we've solved the problem. And then the film ends with the CEO saying, That's good, son. What's your name? But don't be insensitive. He's a dead robot. Oh, yeah. Then he goes, Murphy. Perfect. <laughs> and then that's the end of the film. That's Robocop, it 1987. Plays the classic, it plays a classic theme song, which goes like, what, Maybe Maybe Stu should put the actual real theme tune at the end or something. No, I think we should keep that. I actually punched my knees so much doing that, I hurt them. Whew, so yeah, that was Robocop, guys. 1987. So as far as we're concerned, it had no sequels and no remake. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So, what have we learned in our lives from Robocop? What life lessons have we learned? That, if you ever get turned into a robot cop, make sure that you follow full pro- process of police procedures. Yeah, take people back to the station. Yeah. Do the less glamorous side of the job, you absolute diva. Yeah, it's paperwork. Yeah. yeah we don't, there's no scenes of him sitting down doing his paperwork, is there? No, oh. no. What I'd do, if I was Robocop, is pull my own face off. So I'm just a robot head. <laughs> That's not good. Anyway, how, how would you see? Do you reckon there's... You have, like, robot like, eyes? Is there, like, robot eyes behind it? Yeah, because they, they drilled a wireframe to his eyes. So he must have done something behind the scenes. So, oh. right. On his, in his eyes, they won't be normal human eyes then, would they? So, like, what is behind them? Is that, like, painted on robots, robot eyes? It's like Terminator, I think. They're just pretend yeah. ones. I've like, got cool camera eyes behind it. Uh. No, I think that's what it is. And they just gave him that face. I think they watched Thomas the Tank Engine and thought, that looks cool. Let's make our cop like Thomas. That's what <laughs> I think has happened. Steve, what's your life lesson you learned from Robocop? Um, to always have a one-liner ready. <laughs> yeah, I mean, watch some Arnie films with prep if you need to. But, yeah. There's, there's got, to be, got to be off the cuff, because if you throw a one-liner out, it's got nothing to do with the situation. It's going to look like a fool. Yeah, like if Robocop shot someone and then went, I like burgers, but it wouldn't really work. <laughs> My face is coming loose. <laughs> Something like that. Like a corner of his face you know, just like, flapping around. Like, say you had a one-liner bit pre-built up, and, like, say someone on fire, and he said, said, got a light, 
that's pretty good anyway. No, that's good, though, but then yeah. if you shot someone and then you just messed up and you went, God, I like you. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh, crap, I messed that up. I'll have to, I'll have to kill, kill him again. Like Hardy in Predator. If he threw the knife at someone, pinned him to the wall, and they went, hasta la vista, baby. No, it's the wrong one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> threw the knife. Wrong. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So that was the first episode of Follow Through, which is, as you can probably tell, mostly unscripted and just done on the spot. Mm. Now, what movie should we do next time for Follow Through? I reckon Predator. Oh, you're going straight in for the big boys and Predator. What do you reckon, Ryan? Yeah, Predator. Yeah. All right, we'll do... Uh, that classic John McTurnan action film, Predator. All right, so I think that's it for uh, follow through. Should we do a quick where to follow us? Uh, Stu, where can we follow you? Art Digestive One. That's on Twitter. Oh, I'm so I'm so edgy on Twitter. Okay, Ryan. Yeah, same um, Twitter at Shout Select Ryan. Or I'm on uh, Twitch, but I've not been on it for a while. Like cheese underscore clock. Well, there you go. Follow them anyway. They might go online. You never know. Uh, I am, as always, at Winstolf on Twitter. Uh, or I run the Shark Select website, which is www.sharkselect.wordpress.com. I also run my own website, which is www.winstolf, with, uh, with a zero instead of an O, portal at wordpress.com. And the podcast Twitter is at Shark Select Pod. And I think we've covered all bases there, haven't we? Instagram, yeah. Shark oh. underscore Select. Yes, we've got an Instagram as well. Instagram, Shart underscore select. Yeah. And did you say we're on Facebook as well, Stu? We are, yeah. At Shart Select on Facebook. Do we do anything with that or is it just there? Um, it's just there, I think. Well, just add us anyway. We might do something fun on there. Yeah, yeah. We might post some like memes or inspirational photos like most people do on Facebook. Or you could do yeah. like, like, like a, a lot of people I know on Facebook and just put racist memes and then get unfriended yeah and make sure to send us messages with feedback for the show suggestions of what we can talk about yes this is very important listeners the next episode i think we've decided episode four is going to be about our favorite music in video games correct yeah i think yeah. you music yeah so all our lovely twitter and instagram followers feel free to send us a message or a tweet or whatever saying what your favorite music from video games is and we'll uh, be sure to mention it on the podcast and to leave us five shiny gold stars on in iTunes. Yes. Very important. I forgot to mention this last time. Please, please, if you're on iTunes, go and give us a, a nice shiny review and say how nice we are. We'll read out the best reviews and you'll be like our little, we'll have our little prefects in school and you can be a little teacher's pet and it'll be great. If you want to leave a bad review, go and shout it down the street. That's the best way to get them heard. So, yeah, there you go. That's it then, yeah? We happy? All right, then. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye, Salem. Say bye. Say bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs>